Welcome, everybody. My name is Shannon Desolets. I carry a few hats here um, with Choose Love in New Hampshire. I am Community Wellness Administrator out of the Department for Health and Human Services, Behavioral Health Division, and Program Director of the Choose Love Movement. Prior to that, I worked for, for five years out of, out of Governor Sununu's office, and through my time over the last now almost six years, this is how Choose Up for Corrections was created. And a beautiful thing that came out of New Hampshire, huge, huge thank you to New Hampshire Department of Corrections and also our partner CAST. CAST, for those who do not know, um, our universal design for learning. I like to think of Choose Love as the program being the, the car, the automobile, and CAST has the wheels. And that, that takes us in and makes it possible to bring it in for all varied learning styles and in inside prisons. And this has uh, been a project that has just truly touched me in watching this evolve. And in addition to that, for the Choose Up movement, I am program director of Choose Up for Corrections. And through this work, I have been very blessed to meet Gary, who's with us today, down at a facility in Miami. So Miami was the first facility to bring this outside of New Hampshire. So Gary, thank you so much for being here. We thank have you for so much me. gratitude for you. Please go ahead and, and share about yourself. Uh, well, as stated before, thank you for having me. I'm glad to be a part of this. I am a 17 year veteran of the Department of Corrections, but on the wrong side. Um, with that being said, I've gone through a lot. I've experienced a lot of negativity in the Department of Corrections on both sides, inmates and staff. But it's 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 been a journey. You know, there's been a lot going on, but um, I've always tried to maintain a, a positive outlook on things and to keep myself as positive as possible throughout all the situation. I was not always, I'm not going to lie, I say it was 100%. You know, it happened every time, but as much as possible, I try to maintain positivity and spread that throughout all the encounters that I've had with staff and the inmates. Um, it was this Choose Love program was brought to us by Miss Shannon and yourself and Mr. Dave. Um, and it was very intriguing because I, the incident that happened you know, when it happens and you see it on TV, it's big and it's got your attention. But then as the years go by, it kind of fades back. So when you all came and, you know, she showed the, the film and everything, the presentation, and it was like, oh, I remember that. But it hits, it hits harder and it hits home when you have the mother present and you can feel her story, not just see it and hear it, but you can feel the realness coming from out of her and it really resonated within me. And it was something that I, I knew that I wanted to be a part of. And I'm grateful for the opportunity. And here we are today. Here we are today. Yes, I'll never forget that first time when I brought Scarlett down with Dave. Huge, huge thank you to Dave Doty, who was just determined to make this happen and, and brought this to your facility through his work at MTC. And um just very passionate about his work and, and tremendous gratitude for him. And when we were down there for that first time and, and in the cafeteria, right, it was standing room only, it was packed. Right. Um, and hearing Scarlett share her story, um, for me, it was, it's always so moving to witness how that impacts you all. And when you would, um, Afterwards, people came up to Scarlett, you know, that's, it's, it's always very moving. I, I'm going to be honest with you, Gary, I have yet to leave one of the facilities without tears in my eyes through this program, um, because I think what Choose Love does has the power to get to the heart and allows us all to be authentic and vulnerable. And that's not easy sometimes, right? It takes courage to be vulnerable. And yeah. it's just been a remarkable thing to witness. And so take us back to that. So seeing Scarlett, so what really motivated you to participate in the program, would you say? What drew you to want to do it? Well, 
Um, as I said, you know, I've I've gone through a lot of negative situations throughout my time of incarceration, and I've tried to maintain a positive outlook. And when Ms. Shannon, when you all came and you presented this to us, it was like, this is something that can help to change. Like if, if, if this had been present while I was going through what I was going through, maybe things would have been different. Maybe things would have been different for myself and for a lot of other guys and staff. And this is a really much needed vehicle, much needed, much needed. I think it will, it will do great in the Department of Corrections, not just there, but in schools and anywhere that it touches, I think it's just going to explode and change lives. Yeah, absolutely, Gary. Thank you. And so for those listening or watching who aren't aware, so Choose Love, you know, we, we have programming for schools, homes, communities, athletes and coaches, and now Choose Love for Corrections. Um, in addition to that, also choose up for caregivers, which is designed for foster parent, foster caregivers and workers in the field. And through the, the choose up for corrections piece, what will be growing from this program as well is programming for staff. Um, and then in addition to that, programming for families. So loved ones to those who are incarcerated to learn, you know, at the same time as their loved ones to help, hopefully with that reintegration piece or help with family engagement piece. Um, and just really help foster um, healthy, strong relationships. And, you know, you said something that really stood out. And had I had this going through what I did, maybe life would have taken another path. And, and I hear that time and time again, it doesn't matter what facility I am in, and whether it's men's or women's facility. Um, so thank you for sharing that. And one of the things about the program, Gary, that people may not know is that it's peer facilitated. And that to us was very important. You, from your perspective, can you share with us why you feel that is important? Sure. <clears throat> As an inmate myself, when you hear things, you hear information presented to you from an outside source, okay, that's one thing. But when you hear it presented from, you know, one of your own, it, it hits home a lot closer and, and you can feel it more because you can relate. You know that this person that's giving you this information can relate to you. You know that they've been in your shoes. They've walked the same steps that you walk. So it's it's different. And it's, I, I agree with this way of doing things. I do. Yeah, thank you. What I, I, I remember visiting a facility here in New Hampshire and um, it was during a choose love, choose love lesson. And I was out in a little lobby area and a man walked out and, and tears in his eyes. And he said, you know, I didn't, I've never had a friend until now, you know, so that space created for you all. And, and when we talk about safety, it's not just physical safety, it's psychological safety too. Right. And we need to feel safe to be able to share. And it takes courage to be vulnerable and to share our stories. And I think there's just something that cannot be replicated that comes out of that in these developmental circle style um, classes led by a peer facilitator. And it truly stood out to us, to both Scarlett and me, when we attended the, the graduation or, or sub celebration at the end of completion for Choose Love, how impactful you were as a facilitator. Um, we heard it from other residents, but then also when you got up and, and spoke, that was, it was just absolutely eloquent and beautiful. And I just truly thank you for saying yes to something that's never been done before down there. That can be a little scary facilitating something that you don't have a model to go by. Um, and you said, yes. And I, I'm just truly appreciative of that. And, um, what was also beautiful for me was witnessing your family members there celebrating you. And just how much love and pride they have for you. And, um, you know, I, I have a feeling inside that this is just simply the beginning, Gary. Yes. And um, we look forward to, to doing much more with you and Choose Love. And so you talked about what led you to say yes to the program. What really, can you describe your experience going through this each week as a facilitator? Well, as I was the peer facilitator for this inaugural program here, um, it did take courage, which is one of the four core values for Choose Love. 
Uh, because as you said, this is something that's never been done. So I wasn't really sure what it's supposed to look like or, you know, how it would be re received from a bunch of quote unquote hardened criminals. I, I don't want to put that title on them, but, um, you know, a bunch of tough guys or whatever. And, and the classroom is, was very, uh, uh, how do I want to describe it? There were young guys, there were middle-aged guys, there were there was a big mix, there was a big blend of people. So it was, it was people from all kinds of demographics. There were, you know, Hispanic guys, there were African American guys, there were uh, Caucasian guys. There, everybody was present. And to get, you know, I don't have, I haven't walked in an Asian American shoes. I haven't walked in. Uh, a Caucasian American shoe. So I don't know their journey. I don't know everything, you know, about their story, but I have to present something in a way that it relates to all these different groups. And so that was another challenge. How do I present it to where everybody can relate and where everyone can receive what I'm saying? And I don't want to present it in a way where it's, it's boring. I, I want to, because if it's boring, then you'll start to lose people. Yeah. So the challenge was also to make it kind of fun and make it catchy to where guys will learn well, they'll want to learn and to not just give them all the information, but give them examples as well to where they figure stuff out as you're going, you know, instead of just reading out of a textbook per se, to make it where they kind of figure things out. So, and it was also very uh, informative. I like the information that we did receive from you all, you know, I would take that information, I would do my own research and kind of mix it in and give it to the guys. And we learned a lot. I learned a lot about myself and all of the guys present learned a lot about themselves as well. So it, it was a real good experience. That's so great to hear. Thank you. What do you think? Um, like, what's one thing that stood out for you, if, if you feel like sharing? Um, in terms of learning a lot about yourself, like if there is one, just one thing that might stand Before, out. Through this Choose Love program, um, I've always been kind of a, a people person, per se. Um, but like I've always been one to where I'll help you. But when it comes to me needing help, I was always, oh, I'm good. I'm fine. Everything's great, you know. But going through this program, if I wanted the guy, I understood that if I wanted them to share, then I would open up. So anytime we would go through any lessons or anything, I would always lead with personal examples so they would feel comfortable sharing as well. It's not just, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? And I'm not giving, you know, I'm not just taking and not giving, but I would give first and give freely. And right. I think that helped out a lot. That opened a lot of guys up too expressing their feelings yeah exactly i agree with that right when when a peer can show up and be vulnerable you create that safe space for others to feel safe to open up as well and then i'm sure over over as the weeks went by the you know the the group probably gelled even more and yeah. developed grew even more yes yeah, that's fantastic. Have you heard from some of the other guys, like some some of the impact they felt within themselves or has perspective within themselves shifted? I have. I have a lot of guys that, uh, and these are guys that I will walk around the facility and I may head nod or, you know, just speak in passing, but I never really took the time to get to know. But going through this class, now I'm getting to know a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. And now I'm instead of just a, hey, what's up? And I would say, hey, man, how's you going? How's your day doing? How's your family doing? Everything all right? You good? You know, it's more of a camaraderie now. It's more of a familiarity with more people now. And one thing that I've noticed and I'm proud of, I see a lot of people still walk around with these. Hey. With the hands up. <laughs> I see a lot of the guys still wearing that. So that means a lot because it's not just something that you gave them and they just threw it away or set it aside, but they're making a conscious decision to wear this and display this. And you know, when people ask them about it, they're gonna be able to tell them and give them their version of it. So that exactly. was pretty good. 
Oh, that's awesome. And that visual reminder, right? To seeing it day in and day out. It's a visual reminder with the choose up formula right on there. So for those that don't know, the choose up formula includes courage, gratitude, forgiveness, and compassion and action. And um, I love hearing that. I love hearing the bands are being worn and the camaraderie. Because that, you know, from from a DOC perspective, from a Department of Corrections perspective, if that kind of camaraderie and um, relationship building is is in, is happening, then the climate within the facility, right? Yes. Improves. Yes. And, you know, so that's just, that's outstanding. That's outstanding. And um, I'm just looking forward to hearing continued stories and learning more. Were there any specific lessons that you felt really hit home? Um, Stood out? There was the gratitude. Mm -hmm. Really, really for me, the big thing, um, which is something that I was taught from my father and from people, you know, just lessons, life lessons in general, perspective. I think, and I, I keep reiterating that over and over again, but perspective is a really big thing. And once you can get people to see things, not just from their perspective, but from the next person's perspective, and you get to see how they view things, and maybe you'll get a, a, a small glimpse into what's life like for them. Maybe you'll have compassion, mm -hmm. and it may change your whole outlook on the situation just by changing your perspective. So for me, that was a really big lesson, perspective. Yeah, thank you for that. It's always great for me to hear, you know, what, what really hits um, for people, because this, this program has really evolved through conversations just like this I have with the residents and, and learning and hearing from them or, or what improvements they think could be made, um, you know, and sitting down with, with speaking with residents here at the New Hampshire Department of Corrections, we, we added lessons after those conversations because of what they told me. So this is just, I hope you all know, those that are doing this in the very beginning stages, the, the ripple effect that you all will have, not just for today. That was another big one. Endless big years ago. Yeah, right? Because you're touching the lives of the men in the class and their families and that, you know, so it carries on. And um, it's just amazing when you think about that, that ripple effect that we can all have. And um how do you find now, after completing the program, um, are you finding yourselves incorporating some of the lessons into your daily life um, perspective you just shared? You know, that Definitely. sounds, yeah. yeah. Perspective and the ripple effect, those are two big things for me. But these are things that, you know, when I see, um, I may see an argument or something going on right there, and I may step to a guy and them to the side later on you know once everything cooled down and try to get him to see it from the other person's perspective you know and a lot of times there's the common response is man i didn't see it like that yeah. and that's okay you know that's something we all you know in the heat of the moment we all don't necessarily take the time to stop and think and consider the other person's perspective but if you put it into practice and you continue to do it over and over and over again, then it becomes second nature. Yeah. So it's just something that you got to work on. But for me, perspective and the ripple effect, showing guys how there, because a lot of people, they think that, okay, I came to prison. That's just me. But it's not just you. You have a mother, a father, sisters, children, aunts, uncles, just a, a plethora of people that look at you, look up to you, and love you and it's impacted their lives as well and the quality of their lives and my little brother my younger brother I don't want to call him my little brother he's almost 30 <laughs> but uh he's 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 revealed to me that my incarceration definitely impacted his upbringing because you know the he's a baby boy so and we're on the two boys one at the beginning one at the end I'm the oldest so they wanted to really kind of make sure that he didn't get into any trouble you know what I mean so they kind of uh tightened down a little bit on him 
you know, more than they were with me. So he was he expressed that to me that my incarceration and my actions definitely affected his upbringing. Yeah, and that took courage for him to open up and and share that too, right? And yes, yeah, and and do you feel like that's um, enriched your relationship with him to be able to have those honest conversations? Yes, because you know it was something that I never would have known, and I never really considered until he revealed that to me. Like yeah. I was just thinking, I was thinking of myself, my daughters, of course, um, and my my mom, dad, you know, because I can see things from them but my siblings they kind of hold it hold things to themselves my, my younger sisters my little brother so for them to reveal these things you know mom and dad are always going to tell you they're going to cry and let you know how they're feeling what they're going through but the siblings are kind of just be strong big bro hold your head up but for him to express that to me was a real big thing and it made me also stop and consider the, the rest of my siblings feelings you know, it made me open up other conversations with them as well. Yeah. And is that something that's grown since doing this program? Like you, for, within yourself, like stopping and thinking about those and having more of those conversations? Yes, definitely. Through all of the, the lessons that we've gone through, um, I go through them with my siblings and my mom. That's great. Um, so, you know, yes. So, uh we all went through it together. You know, I, I give them a brief version of, of everything that we learned, but they're learning the same things as well. And I'm hoping that they apply it. And also, actually, uh, my family just came to visit me last weekend, and they are now proud wearers of the Choose Love <laughs> Band as well. So, yes, it's, it's definitely impacting more people than just myself. That, that gives me goosebumps. How could he hear that? And I, I would love to be in touch too if they want to have a part in in helping co-create, you know, the the program for families. You okay. know, sure. Active would be great. Um, ah, that gives me goosebumps. I just you're living, breathing the program. You know, there's something about choose love. It's not just okay from this date to this date. It's choose love. This is essential life skills that we carry with us for the rest of our lives. Right. And we're going to fumble. We're going to make mistakes. We're human. Congratulations. That's how we learn and grow. Right. Um, but it's definitely something I know for me, even personally going through challenging periods in my life that I'm just great. So grateful now to have the choose a formula to really help me through those times. And boy, I look back on other points in my life where I wish I had had this prior, um, or just instilled in this from the very beginning when my son was born, um, he's now 23, but, um, yeah, thank you for sharing that and the impact that that also has on the family. That is, that's, it's beautiful, right? We say we can probably never measure the actual success of just this one class um, that happened. And that's just outstanding. Now we're talking about a lot of the great stuff that happened. Were there any challenging times, any challenging weeks or any challenging things that came up? Well, there were some of the lessons that were kind of difficult. I can't remember off the top of my head, but there were uh, maybe one or two that might have been difficult to present in a kind of fun, interesting kind of way uh, to where the guys would understand. So there were a couple of lessons where I was kind of losing them uh, a little bit, but, and um, we have the we have the relationship where it, we began to in, in eventually gain a relationship to where you know at the end of the class end of every class I would ask them hey how can we you know make these classes better how can we make them more effective did you like it did you learn anything and at first they would be quiet and they, they were just ready to go mm -hmm. oh everything was great all right class over let's go. But eventually, you know, weeks after week, they started participating more and they would give me feedback and they would tell me, hey, listen, this lesson was great. Maybe we can touch on this again. The next one. Sure. Or this lesson was uh, so so maybe we can change a little bit. And OK, how? And then I would get more feedback from them. So it, it helped me a lot as well in preparation for the next week. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it. 
That's great. And that's a sign of a great leader right there, Gary. We're taking the time and wanting to hear from them and modifying where it's needed for the group because every group's going to have different needs, different personalities. Um, so it sounds like you did everything the exact right way. And um, they're fortunate to have you for sure. And, you know, for me, <clears throat> hearing you and every time in a facility, it's, it's a learning opportunity for me. And I think as someone who was the facilitator, as a leader, you know, we are, are not that it was like teacher student relationship, but, you know, it was peer, but from those in the class as, as participants, they often become our teachers too, right? By hearing what they're saying, was there, is there anything that might, and you've touched upon some of this before, but in going along with the the thought of, did you as a facilitator, excuse me, I need more coffee this morning, um, become a student? Were you able to learn from them? Or is there something that you gained by facilitating this that you can carry forward? Yes. Um, during... A few of the lessons, I would present information, the material, and then they would give feedback in the class. And there were times where, speaking of perspective, I would present it one way, and then you would have a guy that would say, well, what about if you look at it like this? And then I stop and think about it. And I'm like, you know what? Huh. I didn't even think about that. And so the conversation would shift a little bit, and we would go down that road. You know, and then we started doing that with pretty much everything, just seeing the different the different routes that you can take to get to the same conclusion. Yeah, so, that's, yes, definitely. That's beautiful. Can you imagine if this was happening like in everyday nor normal relationships? Right. Where would you be a different much, place, Gary? Much better. I think every every couple needs to have something like this and learning to the game perspective and communication skills and that's yep. just beautiful I know you know actual listening too right compassionate listening when we're truly listening to hear what the other person is saying versus listening to respond right and um having the strength to say yeah there's there's more ways than just how I see things and and wanting sincerely to to learn from the other person. That's been, that's just fantastic. Um, you know, we, we, I am about to present, um, next month to a regional, it's the Correctional Leaders Association regional conference. So multiple, multiple commissioners for Department of Corrections. And from your perspective, like in what ways do you think the Choose Lab program would impact the larger prison community? Like what's one thing you might want to say to the other commissioners for Department of Corrections regarding this program? I would tell them that the Choose Love program is, this is coming from the perspective of a 17 year veteran. I would tell them that the Choose Love program is something that is much needed if, as I said, if I had these skills and this information back then, if someone had taught me this back then, if it could have been relayed to a lot of these guys back then, the state of, of the DOC right now could be possibly different. All those years ago, you know, if, if, if we had access to this kind of information and this kind of knowing, this knowledge, that you don't have to, because a lot of times prison dictates if A happens, then B has to happen. But that is not necessarily the case. And this is the mind frame that a lot of guys have. If A happens, I respond like B. But mm -hmm. there's C, D, E, F, and so on and so forth. There's just so much more, so many other options that are available that guys don't understand or don't think that they have these options. All they know is this is the way it goes inside the, it's what prison is called. It's commonly referring to as the chain gang, but this is how it goes inside the chain gang. And even though you're confined and you're locked down, incarcerated, you don't have to have the mentality of an incarcerated individual, of a chain gang 
lifestyle. You don't have to think like that, even though you're in that environment. And this is something that is big and something that they need to learn. You Just because you're here doesn't mean you have to act like what this place dictates you act like. You can be different, even though you're here in this environment. And that's a big thing. That is a big thing that they need to know. And not just not just for the people with blue and white stripes or whatever color your uniform is, mm -hmm. but on the other side as well. Because I've spoken with a lot of staff members throughout the years, and a lot of them feel like, because you all are hardened criminals, I have to present a certain facade to you all. And it's not necessarily the case. It doesn't have to be like that. So it, it, it works both ways. Yeah. So powerful words right there. And I, I think someone who broke that model of I need to present this way is Mr. Andrews. And that, you know, we, we need to give a shout out to him too for being the staff mentor on this program, right? Yep. And um, just so giving genuinely from himself and wanting to see the success in this and wanting to see the impact made. Um, so just let's give some gratitude to, to Andrew for sure as a staff mentor. And, um, you know, thinking about something you said, and it's something that's that's been said to Scarlett too in the past from those who are incarcerated. Like, I didn't know I had a choice. I've only known hatred, anger, resentment my whole life. Mm -hmm. For them, love may not have been a positive thing you know perhaps people who were meant to be loving them in their lives ended up hurting them and, and painful so how do you think that is from the resident's perspective inside a facility hearing about a program called choose love <laughs> you know how, what's either for some people there might be a little need to step over a little obstacle there in their mind with the word or words choose love how do you think that resonates with people? Definitely. I remember uh, seeing the flyer posted up here, you know, before you all actually arrived on scene, choose love program. You can just hear it. choose love. I ain't trying to choose no love. I ain't trying to go to no choose love program. But once you all came and she conveyed her story and the information, you could just see looking around the room the mindset changing on a lot of these guys versus just seeing, oh, choose love. What, what is this, you know? And because when you're in this kind of environment, when it's just anger, anger, and aggression, and aggression, love is not really something that you display. You know, it's, it's kind of put to the side when you get your little 15, 30-minute phone call with your family, or whatever. that's when you choose love. After you hang up their phone, it's back to business. And so it was met with a little, hmm, I don't know about that. But once once you all came and she made her presentation, you could see, oh, this is what this is about. And a lot of guys opened up to it. Yeah, impactful. And that's what I was witnessing, watching through you all, hearing her story. And, you know, I think oftentimes love is is deemed as weak, right? Being loving, kind is weakness. But really, it takes more strength to be able to pause in a situation, have a thoughtful response versus reactionary or angry. And, and we all know that below the surface of anger could be a multitude of different things. And there's a lot of hurt, right? People that are hurting others are hurt. Right. And, um, you know, there's so much we can learn from that. And I know other conversations... Scarlett's had and I've had with people is it comes down to the need for being seen and safe, right? Um, there's she's had conversations with with past um, would have been school shooters, um, and that there was a plan in place, um, or or someone who was a school shooter and would share stories about they would do things on a daily basis just to see if they were seen and they never were, and the importance of seeing one another, right? Being human. <laughs> and no matter who we are, no matter our ages, no matter our backgrounds, we are all the same and the need to love, be loved and have those authentic connections. And there's so much power and grace and strength and transformation that can come through these, these connections, through seeing someone, 
through stopping now that you're doing, no, really, how are you doing? You know, instead of just the nod in the hallway that you shared, that's powerful. I, I imagine if the world was doing that, I think about even just in workplaces, right? Right. right. And just what that can do for a whole culture and then for one another and, and humankind, right? The, the world is so many people struggle with various mental health things right now. And just, we all have stuff, right? But it's right. It, imagine coming together in that human spirit and having the strength to choose love right. in those heroic moments, right? Those, that heroic choice, that choice moment model and utilizing the choose love formula, what a difference it can make. And one by one, one person at a time, you know, we can make the world a better place. And you are certainly doing that for sure. Um, what advice would you give to someone who might be considering taking the program? Maybe on the fence or what is this choose love thing? I feel, okay. I would say that um, if you want to know more about yourself, if you want to find out things about yourself that you didn't necessarily know, traits, habits about yourself, about maybe your family members, if you would like to change your perspective on things, if you want to see things in a new light, if you want to see things in a more positive spin, then you should definitely sign up for the Choose Love program. If you want to see a different way of doing things, if you want to find out if there is actually more than one way to do things, is this just a guy talking? Is this just, you know, somebody just saying what they're saying just because it's nice words? If you want to find out for yourself, then be sincere and become a part of the Choose Love program. Oh, beautifully said. Thank you. Thank you. And that, that's, some, that's not easy, right? That self-reflection and going inward and learning more about ourselves. But wow, what an opportunity for growth. You know, we talk about post-traumatic growth a lot in the program. And that's something that... Um, you know, I definitely wanted us to talk about today because going through trauma, hard times, you know, there is that opportunity for us to grow and what choice are we going to make in those moments and um, being able to reflect and grow. That's a success there for sure. Definitely. Yeah. You know, there's a, there's a quote I have hanging in my home here and I, I keep it right outside in my hallway, right outside my bathroom door. So I see it on a daily basis. And it's by Jennifer Pasteloff. And it said, it says, when I get to the end of my life and I ask one final, what have I done? Let my answer be, I have done love. And you are embodying that. You are living, breathing this, you know, through stepping forward and not only facilitating, but really carrying this forward, sharing it with your family. What a gift to be able to share this with your loved ones and enriching those relationships too and gaining those perspectives. And I just... I cannot thank you enough. Um, you know, you you said earlier 17 years in, right? Yeah. And, and soon you'll be being released. So, yeah. so what's next for Gary? <laughs> that is the big question. <clears throat> that is the big question. Um, I, I honestly didn't think that I would be where I am now. So, um, and I, I, I'm... I'm before I answer that, I would like to say that I'm very grateful to have this opportunity. Um, not everybody knows my story, but I was actually given a 40 year sentence. And after 15 long years of fighting, it was reduced. And so now I'm at the point now where, you know, I'm coming home soon, really soon, within a matter of months. This is great. And I, I, I thank God for it. But with that being said, <clears throat> when I had this long, extensive sentence, my mindset was a little different. Even though I was still trying to be positive, I understood that I have an extensive amount of time to do. So I have to kind of uh, be a certain way to kind of um, understand that. Uh, when you're around a group of individuals that, to, 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 for an analogy, 
if you are a zebra amongst a pack of lions, you are easily identified and targeted. So if you don't want to be a zebra, then I suggest you yourself become a lion or lion-like. And so my mind frame was a little different. Even though it was still positive, there will be times where the lion will roar. And when I got this time cut, it was like, it was, it was wonderful. And then the Choose Love program came to me and it kind of really validated all those times where I was supposed to respond like B, but I chose D, E, or F. It, it really validated all of that and really showed me that I did do the right thing, even though I was with all the lions and, you know, I didn't have to attack this zebra. I could just shoo him away and just, you know, leave him alone altogether. I didn't have to respond a certain way. And I'm glad for that. But what's next for me, because I had all this time ahead of me, it wasn't really something that I was planning for at the time, you know, because it, it just, I woke up, I tell people I woke up on a Friday and I had 25 more years to do. And at lunchtime, I got a call from my lawyer. And just like that, I had two years and change left. So it was a lot that just changed in an instant, literally in an instant. And so now my perspective on a lot of things has changed as well. And now, whereas my future was me getting out 60 something year old, older gentleman, now I'm a 40 year old young man. Um, and so a lot of things have changed. So what's what's next for me is still, whew, it's uncharted territory and I'm kind of figuring it out as I go. I have a couple little way markers per se, a um, couple little people, you know, helping me out, helping me to figure this thing out, but I want to figure it out on my own. Yeah. Um, and I think that's a big thing for me because I've been incarcerated and I've been, kind of had, I don't want to say my manhood, but had my man stripped away from me to where I was treated as a child or as a, a teenager, you know, mm -hmm. a subordinate. And now I get my man back and now I'm my own man again. So now I want to make decisions for my help. And I understand that help is necessary a lot. And it's something, a big, it's a big thing for me, asking for help, receiving help. And, um, and that was part of the Choose Love program too, you know, being grateful for help and knowing that ask for forgiveness, being grateful for help, asking for forgiveness. It's okay to ask for help. This is a big lesson that I've learned. And when you do receive help, be grateful and express your gratitude honestly and wholly. So I'm sorry, I, I know I'm dragging this out. Oh, not at all, Gary. What's next for me, um, I would love to do public speaking. That's always been a big thing for me. I, what I, one thing that I am going to do, this is a, and this is happening. Uh, years ago, when I was down, you know, I was just seeing a lot of these younger guys, 18, 19, 20, early 20s, come in with boatloads of time. And to them, it's, it's not a bad thing, per se. It was like a, a status. Oh, I've got... 30 years or I've got 40 years or I've got a life sentence and I'm you know I'm sitting back like yo y'all think that this is cool y'all think that this is you know this is you, it's sad yeah. it's sad and so my thing for me a big mission of my personal mission is that I want to be a mentor while I was been while I've been incarcerated I've dealt with a lot of guys I pulled a lot of these tough guys you know, I've taken them under my wing and I've talked to them and helped them to see things and choose, choose love. Um, and so it's, it's this program kind of really just fit right with what I was already doing and who I already was as an individual. So I'm thankful that you all provided me with more tools so that I can better help other people. But I'm definitely going to be a big brother, a mentor, to young kids that's that's 
that's something I'm going to make happen. And that's just so impactful. What a gift to them. It's clear to me through being down there with you and, and hearing you and seeing you with the participants, um, you are a born mentor and you have a lot to share with them and the impact that that can create for their lives forward is, is huge. Um, so thank you for that. And you know, there's something um, when, when we're in that unknown space, I'm not sure what the future holds, right? But using the formula and learning that pause, we know we're going to be okay. You know, no matter this unknown, right. in some ways that can be exciting because it's like, okay, where's, where's life's going to take me? What's unfolding behind the scenes that I can't even see right now. And just feeling safe in that unknown in itself is a huge accomplishment right? That can be a scary place, right? But feeling safe and, and trusting and, and knowing your abilities and your skills and, and what you can bring forward, that is tremendous. And so um, I'm excited for you. And not only for you, I'm excited for the lives that you'll touch. Yeah. And the impact that you can make on those lives, those younger lives, they need to hear it. And if anybody's listening or watching, I can personally attest that he is a tremendous speaker because I did hear him speak at the celebration event. Um, and yeah, we'll stand by that for sure. Um, you know, it's it's just, I, I've said it there when I spoke to that this is just the beginning, right? We've, you've, you all have learned this now, um, but it's a daily practice, you know, and it's just the very start. And it's, beautiful things can come from this, but we can also like, thank goodness we know this now because it can reduce suffering within ourselves. What a struggle to be angry or, you know, not having these coping mechanisms, not being able to see different perspective. Like I feel sad for people that aren't able to, and you know, this is, there's so much possibility ahead. And that's one of the great things that I get to witness happen through you all's eyes when I'm present in these. And um, it's just, I, I feel very honored to be able to witness that and to be a small piece of this, this entire project. And just, I cannot thank you enough, Gary. And I have a feeling we're going to hear from you again. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> and I look forward to that. Um, choose Love Ambassador. Um, is there anything you want to share before we... We close for today, Gary. Is there anything else that's on your mind or one last tidbit you want to get out there? I actually have a question for you, ma'am. Sure. You are the program director for Choose Love Department of Corrections. I understand that um, you and Ms. Shannon, no, I'm sorry, you Scarlet. and Ms. Scarlett. Yeah, uh, they, people do it all the time. <laughs> It's a compliment. I that, <laughs> to me. <laughs> right. I understand that you all are relatively close. Mm -hmm. um, out of all the programs that you could have attached yourself to, out of all of the programs that you could have kind of taken up the mantle for and went to battle for, why choose love? Why choose love? Yes. Great question. So my other hat, Gary, is I provide post-trauma therapy and I've been providing post-trauma therapy in Newtown, Sandy Hook, Connecticut, since just a few weeks after the tragedy. So now over 11 years, I actually was just down there in June, um, bookends the weekend before and the weekend after the high school graduation, because that class just graduated, Jesse's mm -hmm. class. So, and actually they've asked me to stay on another year because now those kids are going off to college. Uh -huh. I don't know how this is going to impact them away from home, away from people that understand, right? What they went uh -huh. through. So uh -huh. I'll continue. But I first met Scarlett just a few weeks after. She came trusting the process. She would lay on my treatment table and share with me about her vision for her organization you know, that was built off of Jesse's chalkboard message that she found soon after the tragedy of nurturing healing love. This is how the whole program was born. And she would share with me about her vision. And for me, the most important hat I will ever wear is I'm a mom. 
And this simply started because I wanted this in my son's school. You can bet I wanted this is my son's school. I've now seen the other side of this. I've seen what can happen to a community going through an unimaginable, horrific tragedy. No way did I want anything like that happening here in my state. So I was simply a mom wanting to bring this to my son's school. But I guess go big or go home, Gary. I was able to connect with our governor and first lady, Chris and Valerie Sununu, Governor Sununu and, and Val, and share with them about the program. And it was right around the time that our school safety preparedness task force was writing our school safety report that governor charged them with, with getting this done, right? That was on the heels of Parkland. Oh. And, you know, the governor said, look, if we cannot put our children on a school bus and know that they're going to be safe at the end of the day, nothing else is more important. And so we, back in July, 2018, the school safety preparedness report was released. And he did a beautiful job highlighting the need for choose love and social emotional learning um, in essence uh, for as the backbone for proactive preventative strategies, right? Like disrupting that pathway to violence, disrupting agreements from happening in the first place, or if one does happen, providing skills and tools to deescalate, right. to, to pause, right? And so he, that was July, 2018, six months later, the federal commission report came out, school safety, first chapter echoed New Hampshire's report and talked about the need for social emotional learning and mentions choose love. So I'm then on a college tour with my son one day and my son phone rings and it was the governor. <laughs> and, he, and my son's like, what? I'm like, and um, he said, Shannon, I would love to meet with you. Will you come sit down with me? And he talked about courageous leader not afraid to think outside the box and just do what is right. And he became, we became because of him, the first state in the nation to make Choose Love a statewide initiative. And so he asked me to, to take this on and be that person to support and serve the state for all things Choose Love. And absolutely, absolutely, 1000%, I said yes. To still help people post-trauma, but now to put so much time and energy into a solution to prevent such suffering, Wow. Absolutely. So um, that's how it started. And because I reported directly to him, I worked right out of his office for five years. He's not running again. So they've moved my position over to Health and Human Services Behavioral Health Division so that this, this position can sustain and we continue to support the state because remarkable things are happening. One of which is choose up for corrections. It's because of my position here and working with my DOC um, that we were able to create this and now that we can share this out to other states and to touch more lives. So absolutely 1000% I stand behind Shoes Love because I it it's essential life skills that we all need. And it's not just a program from this time to this time is Choose Love. It's really it just as we've shared in this conversation together today, it becomes our way of life. And it apps, if we are truly um, approaching this with fidelity for what Choose Love offers, it has this beautiful impact to really transform ourselves and to give us the courage to self-reflect and see where can we improve. Um, and, you know, from the state standpoint as a proactive preventative safety measure, you know, I'm now part of our school safety um, task force. I have been since he had that included in our school safety report and it's proactive prevention, you know, and we need, we need to be proactive preventative in right. life enough, enough of these tragedies and going back and, and the band-aid approaches because lives are never the same again. Right. And we need to be proactive and preventative and the beauty of this particular program and what you're sharing with us today and the ripple effect that you have sharing that with other lives is just the, the impact that this truly can make and changing the steps forward, affecting our pathway forward, affecting how we're approaching adversities and challenges and problems or conflicts, um, not giving up, helping our resilience and seeing the opportunity of that post-traumatic growth, um, having those pause, those moments of pause um, and thoughtful responses versus reactionary and you know, we're all human. We're going to make missteps. We're going to have bad days. We're going to need to remind ourselves. We're going to need to hold up that bracelet. And oh yeah, come back to this formula, right? But welcome to being human. Um, but what a, what a beautiful opportunity to witness this, but also to live it myself 
and it, it's a journey I think that can can touch boy, oh. a different world it would be if it would touch <laughs> more people and more people right in all ages the entire lifespan and so that's that's how I've come to be here with Choose Love, and that's why I pour my heart into this. And um, this particular program could not be a su success without people like you stepping forward and saying, yes, Gary. So I truly, truly thank you. Well, thank you for having me. So just to uh, put it this way, you began your journey as a post-traumatic growth professional, uh, expert, I'll say. And then you became uh, a pro, you take a, a proactive approach with the Choose Love program. So in essence, you're burning the candle on both ends. Well, Miss Shannon, I pray that your candle never goes out and you continue to shine and shed your light everywhere you go. Thank you so much, Gary. Thank you. you. Touch me. Thank you. And same to you. You are, you know, you are that shining light. I witnessed that down in Miami and I'm excited for what the future holds for you and for the lives you're going to touch. And I look forward to our next conversation because this is just the beginning. Definitely. <laughs> Thanks so much. You're welcome. All right. Thanks for listening in everybody. And we look forward to our next conversation. Choose love. Use love.